We are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Ralph Schultz is with us. He is uh, president and CEO of the National Chamber of Congress. How, uh, Commerce. I say Congress. Commerce. <laughs> how, many, um, how many businesses? Uh, how? About 40,000 in this region. 40,000. And through that, the whole MSA. You would probably agree that the chamber is a powerful organization. Some strong voices. I would uh, agree that that business community is yes, powerful. Yes, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. We are a and servant made up, to them. And you are. And you, so you get a sense of, as we sit here now, and we're talking about, you know, the um, effects of this omnibus bill that's going to be signed by the governor. Do you believe then um, that within that membership, again, clearly mm -hmm. there are some businesses that are probably just fine with the governor signing off on this with regard to prohibition? On, on, on certain mandates and how it, whether or not they can be enforced. Um, but there are other businesses that w say, yeah, this is going to maybe be a problem for us. Yeah, I, I think all businesses have said that they want to have control over their own, own environment. So they're not in favor of mandates from any direction, not the federal okay. mandate or the, or the state mandate. And they're not really in favor of a, a mandate compelling vaccination or mask wearing or not compelling or allow not allowing them to institute that themselves so they really just want the independence of operating their business as they see fit and keeping their customers safe safe their employees safe and doing business i mean mm -hmm. one of the big issues with covid was that when you're a small business you don't really have an ac access to a lot of capital mm -hmm. uh, you don't have the the big reserves so you've got to be your doors need to be open and you need to be doing business and what they're saying is give us the independence to make sure that we can stay safe and do business at the same time. Yeah, so in a perfect world, I suppose, with what they'd like, these businesses would prefer to just neither side. I like the way you said that. No mandates on either side, for or against. Just let each individual business decide for themselves on this. Where the rubber hits the road would be then where there would be, and you were just going over the law as you read it there, uh -huh. mandates will be allowed under some of the provisions of this omnibus bill. The difference is that they are not able to be punitive if the mandates are not observed. Right. They, they can't ask for a proof of fulfillment of that, say, the vaccine mandate. They, they, they can say we want all of our employees vaccinated. They can ask if if the uh, if they're vaccinated, but they can't require proof of vaccination. So if if they if a business requires a, ma a mask or requires a vaccination, and an individual says no, I don't feel comfortable with that, and they let them go because of that, they what's can, the resolution? That I mean, are they allowed to, or under this this omnibus bill, they're not allowed to fire you for that? Or if you get fired, the omnibus bill means now you qualify for what uh, I frankly believe is not a whole lot of money these days on unemployment. You qualify for um, unemployment compensation, but one of the other features in this is that a person who feels that they have been wronged in that in that circumstance can bring private action or a lawsuit against the uh, against the business and the business will have to defend that action in the context of the law you know that's that's particularly difficult for a small business because now you're expending money on lawyers and court fees mm -hmm. and so forth whether or not the court determines in your favor um, it costs to, and, whether, yeah, it's always expensive to deal with litigation. And there are a lot of different ways to, to, to create that lawsuit. So you're, you're not even sure that you're going to get consistent rulings, mm -hmm. judge to judge, case to case. So it's a, that private action element can be expensive for businesses. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen when this passes? Are we going to see some lawsuits? You know, it, it, a couple of years ago, we decided to start watching the news day to day and figure out what would happen <laughs> from there. Um, it's, it's hard to say what's going to happen. I mean, obviously, the, the, uh, the president's order is in suspension at mm -hmm. this point. The governor has said that there are things that potentially need to be addressed in the regular legislative session. We'll continue to gain information from businesses, provide that information to government, and see if those accommodations can uh, mitigate the confusion. I mean, really, in reality here, we've got an issue between a mandate from the federal government and a mandate from state government that are potentially in conflict, mm -hmm. and that leaves a business in a confused place. 
Do you think uh, the chamber is in lockstep in some ways with others that are affected by this besides businesses? What I'm referring to is like schools. You know, we had uh, the school board, um, you know, members on yesterday talking about this, and they're they're a little concerned. And 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 the idea of the Metro Health Department no longer having the ability. You know, there were what six municipalities that were allowed to make their uh -huh. own call. Uh -huh. That's been taken away now. And I'm just wondering if you feel the same way that you'd rather if there's going to be decision making process, it's kept locally as opposed to being mandated. The same thing here in Davidson County as say, for instance, Pickett County, which is very, very different in many ways than what we have here. Mm -hmm. I th you know, generally we're in favor of local control. Okay. Um, there, there are circumstances, though, that, are, uh, that occurred during COVID where in different counties around the state, there was different. There were different shutdown or, or quarantine levels. There were different uh, uh, requirements to be open, and along those county lines, it sometimes created a competitive disadvantage for businesses. You know, during during COVID, there was consideration given, obviously, first to everyone's safety and their health. But there was also consideration being given to livelihood. What, what do businesses do? What do employees do to maintain their livelihood going forward? And there were times when there were different policies across county lines that put businesses at an advantage or a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's, that's a complicated issue to deal with. We think local makes a lot of sense, but there can be some conflict in that decision making. Yeah, that's so the Speaker Sexton said as much. He goes, you know, hopefully this omnibus then by flattening it out makes it an even playing field across the, the state, even though counties are different in a lot of ways. We you just know? I mean we just think when you're close to the ground, close to the action, local makes sense. So <laughs> is that yeah, yeah I, that just does make sense, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I agree with you. So is there a, a conflict? Again, you're absolutely right. The balance here is between health and maintaining a productive business and people's livelihoods, which is very important, both very important. Uh, do you worry that in some ways because of this mandate, which prohibits it, you know, in a lot of ways across the board, that you're, you're sacrificing? Some businesses are telling you that hey, we're going to have to sacrifice potentially some of the health of our employees to abide by this just because, you know, people think it's bad for business. And I want to be able to decide if I want my business to take a shot to make sure that my clerks stay healthy or my customers stay healthy, that should be my call. Mm -hmm. But I mean, is, is, is it going too far where it's actually, you know, sacrificing health for economics? Well, I think, again, most businesses want their employees to be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, and most businesses both encourage it. I mean, we've seen incentives offered to employees to go get the vaccine. Um, we've seen businesses sort of align in a public message that says, get the vaccine. So I think they really want to be able to promote that, getting that vaccine. I don't think they want to sacrifice the health of their employees or their customers at all. But I think that that at this point in time, what they can do is encourage it. They can even require it. It's up to the employee to say, I got it or I didn't get it, but I can't ask for proof Yeah, if I'm the employer. And so I, I think there's going to be probably some lawsuits filed to make a point one way or the other. But do, do you get the there's sense? There's always lawsuits yeah, filed. Yeah, I know. Jeez. <laughs> there always are. Well, do you get the sense, too, we're, we're at this place right now, hopefully, because vaccines are out there and more people are getting vaccinated and things have improved a bit. It's certainly way better than it was a year ago where, you know, oh, gosh, you remember things were locked down downtown and elsewhere. You know, yeah. um, is that it? that you you're hopeful you know moving forward that this kind of legislation is going to become a moot point if we continue to get vaccinations and the numbers go down i do i i, I do you know first of all this is sunset this law is sunset in 2023 okay, i'm glad you mentioned that yeah. it only applies to covid in in mm -hmm. this particular circumstance so eventually this law is going to go away um Again, I think you know the biggest issue at the at the moment is confusion. You've got federal law or a federal rule that has now been expressed by OSHA. You've got uh, the state law that has now been passed. It just puts businesses in an awkward position of what can they do, what can't they do, and I think what you're going to find is most businesses are just going to go for the safest option. Um, they don't want to lose their employees. 
either for health reasons or for violating the, mm -hmm. the law reasons. So I think they're going to try to find that ground that works best for them without violating the state mandate. Would you say you do that as a, a business by just communication? I mean, I, I envision, you know, this thing passing and then a business, and I know it's harder depending on the size. Hey, Channel 5 is a business. And when we talk about it, even though with as many employees as we have here, but communicating and trying to get a sense of what the employees want, what the employers want, and reach a, an agreement. Yeah. I mean, you may not always be able to. I mean, we know there are people at some companies where they had deadlines already where um, folks didn't get vaccinated and it was a requirement and they've been let go mm -hmm. and they're going to qualify retroactively for unemployment uh, in that case mm -hmm. and have the option of suing and have the option of a private action and it's going to be interesting to see if that plays out in state or federal court or how who wins on something like it's, that it's new territory yeah, this is completely new territory. Mm -hmm. I mean, as people are going over, I know Bob Mendez was on earlier this week, and he talked about how, um, you know, he and now you probably heard about this, and several council members sent a letter to the mayor to go looking for what he, quote, said, gray areas, because it seemed like they, they really put the omnibus bill together during that special session in a hurry, he thought, over pizza late at night. <laughs> and that maybe there's things that need to be worked out, to which I should say, you know, Speaker Sexton told me, look, if there's some gray areas. We're going to be back in session January, and right. we will address those then. Mm -hmm. Gray areas. Uh, just areas of ambiguity that they're mm -hmm. going to have to try to clarify. I, I do think, look, we've been hearing the conversation about this possibility for some time. Yeah. I don't think it was all put together overnight. I think that there were there was a lot of discussion prior to that special session. I think what was unclear was, was there going to be a special session? Yeah. But um, yeah, so but it it is again we can we're going to continue to advocate to for businesses to have as much of that decision making power as they can and in this case it it really we felt like decision making in the hands of the of the business owner operator proprietor was the best solution and that's not what you have right now that's that's not completely what we have right now. Take a break. We come back one more quick segment, and I'd like mm -hmm. to just speak more in general about business and how it's doing with COVID where we sit right now. How sure. about that? We'll be right back with more with our guest after this.